Greetings to you. Long time no see. How are you doing? Anyway, it's gone. What, trimmed? Short? Better, I think. What do you think? Let me know. Do you prefer it long or trimmed like this? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, on today's recipe. I have not made this in a few years because I haven't been able to find the ingredients that I need. The humble blackberry. We have had to hunt all over the island to find these. We've been hunting in every bush, every gorse bush, every patch, every pasture, every bit of common grazing ground. And then, late this summer, we found a few bushes hidden away. I won't tell you where they are, top secret location, but we found blackberries. Not too many of them, I have to say. Only a few bushes and they're really, really late up here. I know many of you have made blackberry wine and blackberry mead earlier on in the year, but we're so far behind up here. Our blackberries are still coming out, still turning from green to red to black. Some of the bushes still have flowers on. So I'm going to be making blackberry wine and blackberry mead right the way into winter. So today's recipe is blackberry mead. It is awesome. It is fantastic. It is wow, nectar of the gods, I have to say. It creates a rich, dense, port-like, Bordeaux-style mead that's just so divine. First thing you need to do is go and pick about two kilos of blackberries. You can also buy them in the freezer section of your local shop, maybe, or at least a bigger shop. Frozen blackberries work really well as well, but I prefer to forage them because they're free that way. So next thing, after you've been foraging, is shove your blackberries, all two kilos of them, into the freezer and freeze them overnight. Blackberries, like a lot of other fruit, give off so much more juice and flavour when they've been frozen. It breaks the cell structure down, it creates a juicier, richer, sweeter, more flavoursome juice which you want for your wine and meads. Come on, let's go and do that now. With your frozen blackberries out of the freezer, you want to decant them into a big saucepan. I'm using just over two kilos of blackberries because I'm a bit concerned that my blackberries up here aren't going to be as sweet as those down south. So I'm adding a few more, an extra half a kilo or so for more flavour. Oh yes, so decant them away into your big saucepan and shove the kettle on to boil. First thing you want to do is have a cup of tea. Oh yes, have a kettle on, blackberries, saucepan. So with your two kilos of blackberries, you want to be adding about two kilos of honey. The better the quality of honey you use, the better your mead will end up being. Personally, I'm going for the El Cheapo stuff from the local shop. It's not that brilliant, it's not, it's their own brand. It does the job, it does make a half decent mead. So that's what I'm doing. I'm pouring in the two kilos of honey into the blackberries. Give it a good old pour. Do my cheeks seem very shiny to you? I think they are, not used to seeing my cheeks. Anyway, don't forget to rinse out your honey jars. Get every bit of that honey out, that flavour, that sweetness, that sugar content. Get it all into your pot. It's your honey, you paid for it, use it. It all adds to the flavour. So put the kettle on, rinse out your honey jars, and add that to the So that's your two kilos of blackberries, or thereabouts. Your two kilos of honey added. Now is the time to fill it up with water, your big saucepan, to about the four litre mark. So put in your kettle and get that boiling water into your saucepan. Fantastic. Really simple this recipe, but the rewards are amazing. It makes a fantastic, brilliant, brilliant bottle. It's one I'm going to be setting aside for drinking. And then you want to give it a really good stir. You'll get all the delicious honey and the berries all mixed in. Get them defrosted, move it all around. And then you want to whack it on top of the stove for about 20 minutes on just below the boil. 
That way, a lot of the flavour will become extracted and it'll start to infuse together. So put onto the stove, 20 minutes, go and have a cup of tea or a glass of apple wine. Fantastic. So with your blackberries simmering away, you want to go and scrub out and disinfect, sterilise a fermentation bucket. Enough to hold the one gallon batch of blackberry mead you're making. Because you want to add your simmering liquid, your simmering brew, your mead mix and belly mix into the fermentation bucket. So that's the next step. Go and clean it, sterilise it, pick it up and grab it. Oh it's just like so. And then turn off your stove, don't leave it on. Bad things happen when you leave the gas on. And pour in the liquid into your bucket. I have really missed blackberries and blackberry mead, blackberry wine. It is such an amazing country wine to make. Now next step is you want to let this cool down to room temperature. So take it aside out of the way. So we aren't going to step into it or knock it over. And let it cool down. And I'll see you when it's cool in a wee little bit. Have fun now. Well hey, your blackberry mead has been stood to cool down to room temperature for a few hours whilst you've had your dinner. Or a cup of tea or a gin and tonic. Whichever thing you did to pass the time. It's looking beautiful it is. The berries and the honey are merging together, starting to give off a great sweet berry-like aroma. This is going to be beautiful. Next step, very very simple, is to add a few other ingredients. First up, I'm going to give it a good squirt of lemon juice. The honey doesn't have a lot of nutrients that the yeast needs to use to ferment. So lemon juice not only adds a bit of acidity, but it helps the yeast eat up through the sweetness of the honey and turn it into alcohol. So give it a few shakes or use a real lemon, depends on your preference. Shake, 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 shake. But don't drop the whole lemon bottle in. Shake, shake, shake. Something else I love to add to meads and goes really, really well with blackberry meads and blackberry wine is juniper berries. These juniper berries, half price in the local yeah. shop, fantastic to add in to your wines and meads. You don't need many, you only need two or three per gallon and it gives off this incredible, rich, pepperish, botanical flavour. It adds that hint of gin behind the mead which really keeps in. So I'm going to grab a couple of juniper berries and add them to your bucket. They're only diddy, only tangy, but they, but they add a huge, huge amount of flavour and punch to your wines. I'll be making a juniper mead before too long using these, so stay tuned for that recipe. So add in about three juniper berries per gallon. Next thing we need to add to the fermentation bucket with the blackberry mead in is a teaspoon of pectolase. Pectolase breaks down a huge amount of that peptic haze that might end up. You get peptic haze in apple wine and berry wines. So just add one teaspoon per gallon and now the essential thing that turns this juice from a juice into a mead is the yeast. I'm using cross my loof mead yeast. I rate them very highly. So we need to pour the sachet into the bucket after you've opened it and then give it a really good stir. Mix everything up. Get all those flavours of the juniper berries, the blackberries, the yeast, the honey, the lemon juice, all working together. And that, we have to say, is this stage finished with. You want to put a lid onto your fermentation bucket, stand it somewhere in a warm place for about four to five days. You want to stir it daily, get oxygen mixed in, get that yeast, that aerobic fermentation ability. So plenty of oxygen, stir daily. I'll be back with you before you know it. Won't we? Well, hello you and welcome back. Five days have passed and the berry mead mix has been stood. I've been stirring it daily. It is looking and smelling awesome. 
it's rich, it's port-like, it's delicious, divine, it's heavy-bodied, it's rich, it's going to be an amazing mead. So next step is to decant your fermentation bucket containing your, your mead, your blackberry mead, into a demijohn. Simply strain out the berries, get all those lovely pieces and stay in. Do a plus, do a sip, do a pender or a pender type. Whatever you have to hand, strain it and get all that juice into a demijohn. For this mead, I'm using a 5 litre water bottle because I have run out of glass demijohns. I prefer glass. But plastic, as long as it's food safe, check on the label and on the plastic bottom, it's fine. It does not really matter. I just prefer glass. One of the beautiful things about blackberries is that you can go for a second press. Make a second gallon of wine from your blackberries. So what I'm going to do, same recipe again, but make wine from the same blackberries. I'm going to add about a kilo and a half of sugar, boil them up, add them back to a fermentation bucket, and start the process again. You get double the drink for your money. Making country wine is all about maximising your yield from your harvest. As I said before, blackberries are few and far between up here in Edy, so very difficult and hard to come by. So why not make two gallons if you can? And now we just need to pour your berry mead mix liquid into your water bottle or demi -tron. Simply grab a funnel and pour it in. And there we have it, one magnificent blackberry mead. All we need to do now is attach an airlock and set this beautiful mead aside until it dries. Let it ferment all the way out. It's going to be plenty sweet enough and it's going to be a delicious, wonderful, rich, dense berry mead. Oh, I'm excited. I'm going to try it. Anyway, I will see you all soon. And why don't you check out another video up by here. Have fun now. Bye-bye.